Shaheen Mystery, born on March 16, 1971, is an Indian social activist and educator. She is the founder of Akanksha Foundation, an Indian non-profit educational initiative in Mumbai and Pune, and is also the CEO of Teach for India since 2008. Shaheen Mystery was born in Mumbai, in a Parsi family. She had an international upbringing, and grew up in 13 different countries, as she moved countries with her father, a senior banker with Citigroup. Shaheen founded the first Akanksha Center in 1989, enrolling 15 children, and employing college friends, as volunteers. It eventually evolved into the Akanksha Foundation, a non-profit education project, that provided after-school tutoring, to children from low-income families. Today. Akangshaw reaches out to over 6,500 children, through its school project model. I reached to touch a rainbow today. I reached up high, so high. And yet as high as I reached up. I could not touch the sky. I'll reach to touch a rainbow again. I'll reach up higher than high. And if I reach up high enough. I just may skim the sky. I remember, sitting on the wide veranda, of our Indonesian home, writing little poems, and notes in a carefully guarded diary. I would sit, and watch little ants carry large loads, determined to get to their destination. What was my destiny? I was already twelve years old, but what had I achieved? It was 1983. We lived in Jakarta, in a lovely, white colonial home, on a street that was quiet. It was a pleasant, almost perfect life, until the day I was taken to visit an orphanage in the city. I do not remember how the orphanage looked, but I vividly remember the children. I saw crying children, laughing children, quiet children, screaming children, and I remember not knowing what to do. I returned to the orphanage every weekend. Perhaps, it was merely curiosity, or a sense of thankfulness for all that I had, or maybe every child's real desire to learn, more about the world. My father was a banker, who had to move cities. Growing up was, a whirlwind of ten schools, across five countries, that spanned the French, British, American and international school systems. I began to understand, that life wasn't perfect during my summer vacations. My summers were spent, between the orphanage in Jakarta, and trips back to Mumbai, where I volunteered at the Happy Home, and School for the Blind. I remember the thinking, of the beauty you can create, when you look beyond what you can see. The school buzzed with confident children, running up and down the staircase, or playing cricket, on the terrace, with a ball that jingled. It was through these summer experiences in India, that I began to see inequity. I'd go from a family lunch, to the dining hall at the blind school. I'd watch, through the window of my air-conditioned car, as children would beg in the streets. I would see piles of wasted food, at a friend's party, and when I left, I would notice, a woman sitting on the side of the road, portioning out, all too meager amount of dal, and rice for her family. I started to see, the slums of Mumbai as the fabric of the city. Suddenly they appeared to be everywhere. I began to notice, the disparity that existed in different people's lives. I was the summer of 1989. As always, I was on my vacation in India. On one blistering Mumbai day, my taxi stopped at a traffic signal. Three children ran up to my window, smiling and begging, and at that moment, I had a flash of introspection. Nothing too unusual had happened, but as I looked at them, I suddenly knew that my life would have more meaning, if I stayed in India. In the days that followed, I kept thinking about those kids. And, that moment. India was answering, the search for purpose, that I had felt ever since, I was a child. I was being challenged to find my identity, I wanted to be part of, making things better for children. I knew then, that this could be my country, and that whatever I did here, could make more of a difference, 
than in the manicured reality of my university life, in the States. Nervously, a week before I was to return to Boston, I telephoned my parents, to try and explain the jumbled feeling, that culminated in my strong desire to move back to Mumbai. They listened carefully, but advised me, and cautioned that, living in Mumbai would be vastly different, from my current vacation. But when I persisted, they agreed, on two conditions, that I would get admission into a good undergraduate college in the city, and later, I would travel abroad, for my graduate degree. The only place, I could think to start, was St. Xavier's, where my parents had studied. I walked into the crowded college office, and asked for an appointment, to see the principal. Admissions shut three months earlier, I was told, and the principal doesn't give appointments. I stood in the corridor outside the office, choking back frustration. A student standing outside witnessed the exchange between the principal's assistant and me. He came over and whispered with a wink. There's a side door to the principal's office. You may want to try that. I went straight through the side door. Father D. Cruz looked up quizzically, and opened his mouth, but before he could say anything, I blurted out what I had rehearsed. Father, my life is in your hands. I want to do something for the children of India. I don't know how, only that I must. He was curious enough to ask me, a few questions, and at the end of our conversation, the father thankfully granted me, admission to St. Xavier's College. The academic system at St. Xavier's was different from the system in the U.S. Here, a far more bookish form of learning replaced, the academic rigor, and intellectual stimulation, I had received in Massachusetts. I quickly realized, that I'd be able to learn more in the city, beyond the classroom. Now that I lived in India, I wanted to understand it, in a different and deeper way than I had, during my summer holidays. I walked around the city, just watching and listening. One day, I walked into a sprawling, low-income community, which was a maze of tiny alleyways, buzzing with life. An estimated 10,000 people lived here, with no running water, no system of waste disposal, and shared six dark cubicle toilets, that lined an adjoining alley. I walked around that afternoon, speaking to children. Wondering, how life would be different, if each one of them only had access to the opportunities, that would fill their greatest potential. Walking down the narrow passageways, I must have looked a little dazed. When a soft-spoken girl dressed in a beautiful sari, welcomed me into her home. Her name was Sandhya. She was also 18 like me. She didn't speak a word of English, and I didn't speak a word of Hindi. But she smiled and laughed and chatted a lot, and I felt an immediate connection with her. Sandhya's life was so different from mine. Every day, I would go to her house, after college. Her home was smaller than the bathroom of my house. When a few children poked their heads inside the doorway to say hi to us, she welcomed them in. These children eventually formed the first class I would teach. Each day a few more kids, would crowd into the little home and ask to learn a few words in English, or a little maths, or a song. Even though I knew very little of India, I felt useful and confident. This became my routine, I'd leave college as soon as I could, and rush to my new world in the community. Here I saw truth and hope. The children would shout Didi, Didi excitedly when I went there. This was starting to feel like a lifelong commitment. Akanksha was born of the simple idea, that India had people who could teach, spaces that could be utilized as classrooms and the funds with which to educate all the children. Everything exists, I just need to find a way to bring all together. The people in the community wanted only three things. Housing, water, and education. I realized that if I wanted the students to take school seriously, they needed an environment free of the community's distractions. 
so we started the search for our first Akanksha center space. I approached 20 schools in the city, requesting to give just one classroom, in their school building, for three hours, every evening. All of them refused for the most illogical reasons. Some administrators claimed that, the idea of teaching underprivileged children, was way too revolutionary. While others complained that, they would spread diseases to other students. A principal of a reputed school, even complained, how she simply couldn't allow the children into her school. As the glass bangles, worn by the daughters of the fishermen, would scratch the desks of her classrooms. Finally, when I was almost ready to give up, the principal of the Holy Name High School, in Koleba, agreed to give a room. That became the first Akanksha Center. I mobilized volunteers, from St. Xavier's to teach, and made a rough plan of, what they would teach. I just wanted the class, to be a place where the children can feel safe, a space where, they can leave the difficulties of their lives behind, and just be children. Akanksha formally came into existence in 1991. From a single class with 15 children, Akanksha grew to 58 centers, and six schools with over 3,500 children. The program developed very organically, over years. Like a soup made special by chefs tossing in what's needed, after each tasting. A blend all its own. The stock ingredients were basic English, and math to that, a dash of values, self-esteem, and confidence. <laughs>